Hello everyone. So today's film, I guess we could call it a continuation from where I left off with our previous film about how to lacquer, where I was lacquering a piece of furniture of which that I purchased some time ago. I am aware that just the other day that there was a royal wedding here in England, but just to clarify, I wasn't actually getting married. In today's film, I'm going to be talking about rubbing out lacquer or rubbing down lacquer for a polished finish. Now, I'm not going to be going into the polish aspect today. I shall be speaking about the polish aspect at another point in another film because I want to share as many tips, techniques and recommendations as I possibly can on each subject and each part of the process when achieving a very high glossed, very shiny, almost glass-like finish with lacquer on furniture. Now, of course, there are different techniques for achieving a polished finish on many different things, whether it be stone or concrete or wood or whatever. Stone, of course, can be polished down and rubbed down, whereas with biological matter like wood, you must combine a polish or a compound to it to achieve that very high glossed finish. Whether it be an oil-based formulation or an acrylic formulation, it almost creates a barrier on the wood, a barrier of oil or of lacquer, of polish or varnish or whatever, which then can be polished down. Of course, lacquer and many different types of varnish provide a very high glossy mirror-like finish regardless. However, to achieve the flawless finish, one must rub it down and use many layers so that you create a really seamless layer on the surface. Because it is imperfections within the surface, any ridges or dips in your surface can be visible within a glass-like finish. Rubbing out basically means sanding down with a very fine grit sandpaper. So the grit is very, very soft. It's almost as if you were to take a nail file. The nail files used to shape and sharpen the nail do tend to be quite abrasive and the grit is quite unrefined, it's very gritty. Usually if you were to go into a store and buy any nail file, they will have the file which says number one, which is the most coarse. And then there are buffers and polishers. These will have less coarseness and some of them almost feel like a bit of plastic. They don't feel like anything, but it has a very, very fine grit. So the grit becomes finer. And with the finer grits, you are able to polish. It's like buffing a nail. Once you filed it, you then buff it, and then you polish it with the polisher, and it becomes very shiny. A very similar process applies when polishing stone or furniture. Now, of course, you can simply just cheat and use epoxy to achieve a glass-like finish. I absolutely love epoxy. I think it is a fantastic resin. And I'm going to show you an example of a piece for which that I applied epoxy to, epoxy resin, which created a very beautiful glass-like finish. This is actually a custom-made antler stand, made and designed by myself. I didn't really want to use one of these shields, which are typically used to hang antlers. I always think they look a little bit dated and slightly jarring. I wanted to go for something that, of course, played on the traditional position of mounting antlers on a plaque, but something that was more slick and modern and, of course, high glossed. And this, of course, is in black, and if I tilt it down just ever so slightly, you should be able to see my lamps. So it is highly reflective, and I absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. And to hang it in place, I actually used curtain ties, the little hooks that are used to keep curtains back and drawn. These are actually curtain ties and these are made out of solid polished brass. It took me a very long time to find something that would hold them up without having to put a screw or a nail through them. Now, because the piece for which that I'm going to be rubbing down has had many, many coats of lacquer upon it, it is ready to be rubbed down. And what I mean by rubbing down is by taking fine grit sandpaper and just rubbing out the ridges to get everything as seamless as possible so that its surface is absolutely perfect. No ridges, no dents, nothing. And this is actually really necessary when aiming to achieve a flawless glass-like polished finish, even if it isn't a glass-like finish, to have something that is totally smoothed out and smoothed down, this is a necessary process. So for an example, I'm going to take a small piece of pine. This is actually from something else that I'm making and I shall be sharing at a later date. Very exciting. But you can feel, you'll be able to feel on any wood, there's always slight ridges. There's always ridges on the wood. And of course, where the wood has been cut, there's always ridges. Wood naturally has all these ridges. It's quite a beautiful, wonderful material wood. I absolutely love wood. But what we want to do is fill in all of these ridges. And even if you put on varnish on this now and think, oh, it will create a layer, 
only if you use epoxy because epoxy is a liquid when it is first applied and of course it takes its own time to set. It fills in all the ridges and grooves but epoxy is one of these things you have to pour onto a piece. It forms its own flat surface because gravity of course pulls it into alignment but it fills in all of the ridges. Now this is a marvelous thing if you have a flat surface or whatever the piece you are working on but if you are working on a table that has long legs it's very difficult to pour epoxy onto the legs and for it to stay. Gravity is the pro and the con when working with epoxy. So epoxy is marvellous on a flat surface. But back to our wood, I know a lot of you love the wood. So if we were to zoom in on the wood and look at its ridges, it would almost appear like this. We would have all these ridges. Now I have rather large man hands, so please do not mistake me for Goliath, but I'm using my hand to explain what the ridges would look like. So if you were using a substance like polyurethane or lacquer or whatever varnish that you're going for, whether it be painted on or rollered on, or sprayed on, you are creating a layer around all your ridges. So you aren't necessarily filling in the ridges. So the process of filling in the ridges, you can create many, many layers. That is why they recommend to rub down between each coat, because you will go in and you will create your layer, but then by rubbing down and sanding down, you are taking what has been applied on the surface back down, leaving what you've applied in the ridges, but taking it back to the surface. So by going over this many times, you are able to actually fill in the ridges. This of course is a lengthy, time-consuming process. It does take a lot of time. And certainly with the piece of furniture for which that I'm using, I do not believe that it came out of the production factory, having been lacquered or filled in. There are definitely ways to actually fill in wood convincingly, but because this wood has been dyed and decorated, I'm going to have to fill it in with lacquer, rather than filling it in with either wood filler or plaster or clay. So if I were to take this piece here again, and we were to fill in the ridges, whether it be mahogany or whatever kind of wood it is, you can actually use lacquer mixed with either clay powder or powder itself to fill it in. I would not recommend plaster. I have made the mistake of using plaster that's been mixed with water to fill in ridges and of course this went drastically wrong. Fact of life is that wood, when exposed to water or comes in face with water, it expands. So that is where you always find where there has been a leak or something that is wooden. Even wooden spoons, after quite a while, do start to warp and change shape and even the texture of them will start to sort of fray away. That's a fact of life. Wood responds to water. Wood, of course, as we must always remember, is a biological element. So some poor thing has died to bring us this little plank here today. You can actually fill it in with an alternative to plaster. Lacquer, of course, is a very hard, marvellous compound. I absolutely love lacquer. I think it's marvellous but you can mix it with either clay powder or plaster powder. And of course, if you are using mahogany or today I'm holding a piece of pine or yew or oak or ebony or whatever kind of wood you are using, you can dye the filler that you're using or add a little bit of color or whatever to fill in the ridges so that it fills in and smooths everything out. Then you can sand it down, which will give you an immaculately smooth finish. And then, of course, you can go in with your lacquers and your polish. Suddenly, when you look at oriental styles of furniture, which are renowned for their beauty and their decoration and the artworks painted upon them, a lot of the time, of course, it is lacquer that has been used, but to get it to be absolutely polished and smooth, they usually use clay powder or plaster powder mixed with the lacquer rather than water to fill in any ridges. And you can actually just go ahead and plonk it all on and then scrape it off, this filling in the ridges. Of course, this is a fantastic way of dealing with imperfections or ridges in wood that is going to be painted or wood that is going to have gilt applied to it. But you do have to be more strategic if you are going to be simply varnishing that wood or lacquering it. So you would have to use a filler that matches the wood's color or matches whatever decoration you're going to use. However, of course, if it has been painted either black or red or whatever color you're going to put on it or design or decoration that's going to hide the actual wood itself, you don't necessarily have to concern yourself that much about the color of your filler. So when it comes to the sandpaper, 
It's all about the grit that you use when polishing down. When it comes to polishing stone, however, there is a different procedure. I have here just a piece of marble that was lying around. I absolutely love green marble. I collect a lot of green marble things, whether it's a pen or a vase or a tile or whatever. I love green marble. I think it's gorgeous. But you can see here that it is not polished on one side. However, here it has been polished. Polishing stone, you do tend to have to use an orbital sander. You go from a strong grit right down to the very, very, very fine grits, which almost feel like nothing. And just in case any of you are wondering, this is what an orbital sander looks like. It's got this bit here, and when you turn it on, you can see it rotates round and round and round. Of course, you would take off the sandpaper that you're using and apply the correct grit. This has a very strong grit on it at the moment, which is actually P40. Now, this would obliterate anything. You wouldn't use that to polish. You would actually use that to really properly sand something. But today I'm going to be rubbing down a piece of lacquered furniture and I'm going to be using a much finer sandpaper. Now there are many different kinds of grit. What I mean by grit is simply the level of coarseness with sandpaper. So something that is per se P40 is going to be incredibly coarse. You could use it to file your nails, whereas something that is perhaps 1,200, it's going to be really, really fine. And usually the finer grits are used for wet sanding because if you use them dry, they just, it, the friction just, they become inept immediately when you use them dry. So they're better wet, they're better to be used wet. This is actually P1200, so it's 1,200. And this is what I shall be using today to buff down our piece. Now I actually have further grits of sandpaper a lot softer than this and I shall be using them at a later point. But first of all I will be going in with the P1200. After that I will go to 2000 then to 3000 which are very very fine. Now I know many of you would be thinking why are you wet sanding when water of course warps and distorts wood. You don't actually use a lot of water when wet sanding and of course you mix the water with soap because water evaporates very very quickly especially when there's friction but the soap just provides you with a little bit of lubricant. Now you can actually do this by maybe applying one drop of detergent to your water and maybe keeping it in a spritz bottle and spray it on. Of course because the piece has been lacquered multiple times and we're not going to be using that much water you know we're not giving it a bath today we're simply adding water as a lubricant so that we're able to go in with with our sandpaper and polish and sand away some of the lacquer, bringing it back down to all one consistent level and it shall all be smooth. So we are back again with my marvelous table. So after I had over sanded it, I was rebuilding the lacquer up again and this has had four coats since then. So as you can see, it's quite shiny. If I tilt it just a little bit, you'll be able to see the legs and everywhere else is quite shiny. Now, I'm not lacquering the surface here at all. I'm only going to be lacquering the sides, this surface, and the legs. So everything except the top. The top I'm going to be epoxying. So I'm going to begin on this leg first of all. I shall not be doing everything today. I am simply only going to be doing a small section just to show you the process for which that I use when rubbing out and buffing down lacquer. Now I am going to be wearing my glasses to do this as I am incredibly long-sighted. I can't see anything close to me but I can definitely see things at a great distance. I can actually see God at the other side of the universe but anything nearby I am not particularly great at picking it up. Now I actually use a little bit of flash to do this. Now, I know some people will probably disagree with me doing so, but it's quite soapy, so I'm able to lubricate the surface well, but also wet sand without using a considerable amount of water, which of course warps the wood. Now the P1200 sandpaper for which that I'm going to be using today comes in sheet format. It does tend to be something that is more sold for hand use rather than machine use. So what I like to do is just cut out a little rectangle doesn't have to be neat. And with our rectangle, I then fold it in half, just like so. So I can use it like that, or if I want it more specific, fold it again. You can fold it to whatever point you need it. So you can fold it in half or a little bit, just so you get the size that you want before going in and sanding down. Now what I'm going to do is just spritz our surface, just 
just two little spritz and then just massage all of that in. And I'm only really going to be doing one side. This piece will require a lot of buffing out because there are so many different surfaces and shapes but I'm only going to be doing this leg just to show you. I then take my P1200 and I take it just like that and I start buffing and as you can see it starts to reduce our shine. It's taking off our shine as well as excess product so that we take the surface back down to the ridges and just feeling that just like that, I can already feel it's a lot smoother. And I do try to go in circular motions. It can also be great to soak your wet sandpaper in water for 24 hours so that it is not so dry. And with a complimentary zoom, you will be able to see what I'm doing much better. So I'm just buffing and buffing and buffing in circular motions and quite quickly. And you will start to create and build up a lather, as you can see, there's a lather building. And a great way to know when to stop or whether or not you require a little bit more buffing is to feel. Always feel as you go along. Light also plays an important part as you'll be able to see ridges quite clearly. Where there is a shadow, there is still a slight ridge. And as you can see, it starts to reduce our shine greatly. As you can see, the surface starts to appear a lot more smooth. And even though we have taken away the immediate shine and reflection, you can actually see that the light, the way it hits the leg, the light is a lot more consistent. This is a sign that we are creating a much smoother and softer surface. And of course, you just keep doing this and feeling as you go along until it starts to feel really smooth and lubricate as you go. Now I am taking a slightly dampened cloth. It's been thoroughly rinsed out. And I'm just going to go over the surface, removing all of the residue. Now, as you will be able to see, it is slightly matter, but the surface of it is a lot smoother. As if we were to compare it to another leg, when you tilt it slightly in the light, you can see there's all these little ridges. So it's very reflective as lacquer tends to be if it is a high gloss lacquer. But the presence of the ridges is still there. But because on this side, we have began buffing, as you will be able to see, there are several little areas that require a little bit more buffing. And of course, it will require an additional coat of lacquer, probably about two coats of lacquer. And if I just go over it with a damp cloth, just so that you can have an idea of what it would look like with reflective lacquer on. You can see that that becomes very, very glossy and very, very shiny. Another useful point to note is that this sandpaper is usually referred to as wet sandpaper. Or when people say things like they are wet sanding, what they mean is that you use it with some form of lubricant. So once all of the piece has been rubbed out and buffed down to a similar finish as the one that we have created here, I will then be going in with some either regular lacquer. This is the lacquer that I used to totally cover this piece in the first place. But for the final two coats, I shall be using a spray lacquer. And this one is by High Coat, and it is their clear lacquer. I shall be going over everything with two coats of clear lacquer. And once that has been applied, I shall then go in with a final and additional rub down before we go in with our acid polishes, which shall be the next stage. I, of course, shall be more than happy to demonstrate the process of using the spray paint as well as rubbing down for the final time and demonstrating the acid polishing process. Acid polishing is when you take a chemical and it is buffed. It creates a chemical reaction, creating a very high gloss finish. And it is a technique typically used when lacquering. So I'm very excited to get onto that in the next film. But this is how I rub out lacquer. So that more or less completes this film regarding the process of buffing out or rubbing out for a fine, refined, glass-like finish. This is just one part of the process in order to achieving a glass-like finish when employing the use of lacquer upon wooden furniture. To conclude, I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, Thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.